So today we're going to talk about the concept of mechanical advantage. We'll just look at these words. What does mechanical mean? Mechanical means referring to a machine. Advantage means some help. So in its simplest sense, mechanical advantage is a machine helping you to do work. If we think about what we did in the lab when we took this ramp and we pushed a block to the top of where the ring stand was, and we raised the discussion, well, why do you use a ramp? If it, if it seemed like it was more work, which it was, because going up was maybe 100 joules, but we had to do 110 joules of work up the ramp, the question became, why do we use a ramp in the first place? Well, a machine, a ramp can help you by reducing the amount of force that it takes for you to complete the job. Say if this were a really heavy box and you could not provide the force to lift it straight up, using a ramp allowed you to do the same job, but with using less force. That's an advantage. This machine, this ramp gave you an advantage. It helped you to do work. And that's what mechanical advantage is. Mechanical advantage is going to be a number. It's going to be a calculation. And it's basically a way to quantify how much, in other words, a number, an actual quantity, a machine helps you to do work. Because that's why we use machines. We need some help getting the job done. And some machines help more than others, or different arrangements of one particular machine can help you more or less. So on your homework assignment, first thing, we want to define and understand what does it mean when we say mechanical advantage? It is how much a machine helps you to do work. With mechanical advantage, there's two different concepts. There's the idea of ideal mechanical advantage and actual. And I think you can kind of get an, uh, an idea of what this means. Ideal means, ah, best case scenario. Actual means, well, what do you really get? And the big difference between these two is what the actual one takes friction into account. Because we know with the machine, you're always going to have to overcome some friction. The ideal mechanical advantage doesn't consider friction which is an ideal situation. Oh, the machines can help you this much, but oh, no, wait, you actually have to overcome some friction. So the machine doesn't help you as much as you think it should. That's the difference between ideal and actual. The ideal doesn't consider the friction that you have to overcome. The actual mechanical advantage does. So let's look at how to calculate mechanical advantage first. Imagine that you had a hundred Newton box. If you had to pick that up, you would have to use 100 Newtons of force. Well, 100 Newtons, that's a lot of force. Maybe you can't provide that much force in order to do this job. But if we push or pull the box up the ramp, it's still a 100 Newton box. But by sliding it up the ramp, we don't have to provide 100 Newtons of force. Maybe we can do that job with only 50 Newtons of force. So that's how this ramp is helping you. It's allowing me to get this box to that height by using less force. And that's where the formula for mechanical advantage comes in. Mechanical advantage, the actual mechanical advantage describes, well, how much force can you use to do the job compared to the force without using the machine? Well, let's take a look at the formula here. Well, I was able to move a 100 Newton box only using 50 Newtons of force. It made it a lot easier. The mechanical advantage describes how much easier did it make it, make it for you. Well, we've got two forces here. We've got a resistance force and an effort force. The resistance force in this case is the 100 Newtons. It's the force, it is the weight of the box that is resisting me in this job. The effort force is, well, how much effort did I have to provide in order to get that job done? The mechanical advantage of this particular situation would be described as being two. It basically says that, hey, this ramp, using this ramp made me twice as strong. I was able to use 50 Newtons of force to move a 100 Newton box. 
this ramp, this machine helped me twice. It made me two times stronger. But now let's consider this ramp. This ramp is going to be easier to use because it's not nearly as steep as this one. Now I got to go a longer distance, but in the end, the same job is accomplished. It's still a hundred Newton box. We can imagine that here, I'm not going to have to use as much force pushing that block up the ramp. Let's pick a number. Let's say 25 Newtons. The mechanical advantage of that ramp, well, what's the force that's resisting me? It's still the hundred Newtons of the box. How much effort did I have to put in? I only had to push with a force of 25 Newtons. So the mechanical advantage of that ramp is four. It made it seem like I was four times stronger than I was. And that's what mechanical advantage does. It describes how much does the machine help you to do the work. Now the ideal mechanical advantage, this doesn't have anything to do with the forces. Because remember the, the force that you have to put in also accounts for friction because when you pull and you measure your force, the friction is all a part of that. The ideal mechanical advantage is what would the machine help you? How much would the machine help you if you didn't have to overcome friction? This is also a way to predict how much a machine will help you in advance because you don't have to actually do the pulling yet. Now let's talk about a couple ramps. Two ramps going to the same height. Which one of these is going to make the job easier for you? Well, knowing what we know now, we know that this ramp is going to be easier to do the same job than this one. I'm going to have to pull harder, even though I pull a shorter distance. This ramp is going to help me more. So the mechanical advantage seems to be tied to what the ramp looks like, the shape of the ramp. Because we know this one's going to be easier. It's going to provide me more advantage than this one. Well, what are we describing here about the ramps? Well, we've got a length of the ramp and we have a height of the ramp. And the ideal mechanical advantage, which is going to be IMA for ideal mechanical advantage, is found by the length over the height of the ramp. Now, for both these two ramps, the height would be the same. Let's pick a random number. Let's pick say they're five and let's say the length here is 10 remember the length is the length up the ramp how long the ramp actually is let's say the length of this one is oh i don't know estimating let's say it's 40 four times that so the ideal mechanical advantage for this one is going to be 40 divided by five which give me an ideal mechanical advantage of eight this one would be 10 divided by five ideal mechanical advantage of two. So the numbers play out. It seems like this ramp is going to help me more. It's gonna make the work easier because it's a longer, more gentle ramp. It has an ideal mechanical advantage of eight. This one still helps me, but it doesn't help me as much because the ramp is actually steeper. Now keep in mind, these are more like predictive kind of numbers. Like, oh, okay, give me an idea about how much the ramp will help me. Does it actually help me that much? No, because when I drag something up the ramp, I also have to overcome friction. So what I'll need you to do now in your homework for tonight is you're going to go back and you're going to use your lab data, this lab activity here, and you're going to calculate the mechanical advantage and the ideal mechanical advantages for those three ramp arrangements. In order to get a done stamp on this, you have to have this completed by the start of the class period tomorrow.